Hello chemists. Uh, we're going to use this video to introduce Hess's law or sometimes it's called Hess's law of summation. And what Hess's law is is just a way to find out the delta H of an unknown reaction if we know the delta H of some similar reactions. And just like in math where you can add up equations to do a system of equations, we can actually do something very similar with chemical equations if we treat our arrow as an equal sign and see if we can find the delta H of a new reaction when we know the delta H of some other reactions. Uh, recall that delta H means change in enthalpy. So enthalpy is just a fancy way of saying heat. Now they're not exactly the same thing, but for our level of chemistry, we can just say delta H as change in heat or delta H as change in enthalpy. The only real difference between heat and enthalpy would be if we were in extreme conditions like very high or very low pressures. Um, but since we're doing thing, everything out in atmos regular atmospheric pressure, these are essentially the same. And what this says is the delta H is the same um, whether you're looking at a reaction that takes place in one step or in multiple steps. So if something takes place in multiple steps, then you can just add up the heats for all of those and it'll be the same as if that same reaction happened in one step. This is what we call a state function, by the way, um, where it, the, the change in energy does not re, um, rely on um, the individual steps. Um, it's good to take a look at um, our steps or our hints for calculating this, but really what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up the heats of uh, reactions if we have them lined up correctly. And as we go through examples, I think these steps will be a little bit more clear. So a lot of times uh, you'll be asked to write a goal reaction. So this is the reaction where we don't know the, the delta H. So we're going to write the delta uh, H as just a question mark, but then write out the reaction correctly. Um, for the goal, uh, sorry, for the given reactions, uh, we're going to write those in a way to where when they add up, they give you the goal reaction. So this is a very, very important one. It's kind of the puzzle of this to see if you can rearrange the given reactions correctly. And whatever you do to a given reaction, you also have to do to the delta H. So if you uh, change the uh, direction of the reaction, uh, delta H is gonna have the opposite sign. So if you have an endothermic reaction, and you reverse it, it's gonna become exothermic. And then if you multiply or divide by a factor, um, you're also gonna do the same thing to delta H. So whatever you do to the reaction or whatever you do to the coefficients, you're also gonna to do to the amount of heat. It kind of makes sense, because if you're doubling the amount of stuff that you're burning, then it's gonna produce double the amount of heat. And then the very last thing is once you add up your reactions correctly, you're also going to add up your delta H values for each reaction. So like I said, these should make more sense once we go through an example. We're going to go through example one and example three. If you want to do number two on your own, it's very similar to, to example one, um, and it's on the relatively simple side. So the very first thing we, we're going to do is write, uh, if it's not given already, we're going to write the goal reaction that we're looking for the delta H for. So the synthesis of nitrogen dioxide is going to be N2, which is a Brinkelhoff, plus O2 gives 2NO2. And what you might notice is this is not balanced, so we're going to put a 2 in front of the O2. And if we look at these given reactions, think of these arrows again like an equal sign. So everything on the left side of the arrows, we leave on the left side of the arrows. And then everything on the right side of the arrows will leave on the right side. And if anything is common on both sides, so if I have 2NO over on the left side and 2NO over on the right side, um, at some point we can cancel those off. But the first thing I'm going to do is just write an arrow. And I'm going to bring everything on the left side of the arrows down. And this is a little bit of a slower method, but I want to show it to you. So N2 plus O2 from the first reaction plus 2NO plus O2 from the second reaction. So everything on the left side of the arrow stays on the left. On the right side, 2NO plus 
NO2. And this is already looking a little bit like our goal reaction because we have NO2 on the right and that's what's in our goal. So we, don't ha we didn't have to switch anything around for this, which is nice. So as I rewrite this, I'm going to simplify. Anything that's common on both sides, I'll get rid of. And you might notice that 2NO, just if you like if you had 2X on each side of an equation, uh, you can eliminate it. So 2X equals 2X or 2NO is making 2NO. We can eliminate it. And then we can also combine like terms. So I'm going to bring the N2 down and then the two moles of O2 together. So N2 plus 2O2 is on the left, and then 2NO2 is on the right, and voila, we've written the exact same equation as the goal equation. But we're not done yet, because when we add those two reactions together, we also have to add their heats together. So if I do 180 kilojoules plus negative 112 joules, I believe, with a little mental math, uh, I'll call this delta H3, we are going to get 68 kilojoules. So we found our heat, and that would be your answer on a test. Uh, you do have to show your work, but if you're trying to find the correct amount of heat by doing that work. Let's scroll down and look at number three. There's a little bit more shifting on this one. And as before, we have to write the synthesis of carbon monoxide gas correctly. So our goal is carbon plus O2, it's a Brinkelhoff, gives carbon monoxide. This is not balanced, so I'll put a 2 here and a 2 here. And I usually say delta H equals question mark because that's what we're trying to find. Now, if I look at the given reactions, there's a slight problem. There's some carbon dioxides in the given, but there's no carbon dioxide in the final. So that's one problem. The other problem is carbon monoxide is written on the left, and it should be written on the right in my product. So this is where we have to make a decision. Do we flip one of these reactions around? And the answer is yes, we're going to flip the second one. And I highly, highly suggest you rewrite it. So don't try to flip things in your mind or just flip the arrow. You're going to flip this, and we're going to write 2CO2 yields. And I like to line up the arrows in the same place. 2CO plus O2. And remember, whatever we do to the reaction, we also do to the delta H value. So now delta H is not going to be negative 566. Delta H for this one is now going to be positive 566 because we flipped the direction of the reaction. All right. For this other uh, chemical equation, um, it looks like we have CO2 on the opposite side, but there's only one mole of CO2 on the top, and we need to cancel off two. So what we're going to do is we're going to double this one. So if we go two times here then and rewrite it down below, we're going to say two carbon we'll distribute the two by every coefficient, plus two moles of O2 gives two CO2. Now we're starting to get a little closer to our final reaction. So when I add them together this time, I'm also going to cancel off some things on each side. So what I notice is that the two CO2 on the left is going to cancel with the two CO2 on the right. And what I also notice is I have one mole of CO2 over here, and I have two moles on the left, which is kind of nice because we only want to have one mole in our final. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross off our one mole of O2 here, and we're going to get rid of one mole of O2 here, which is going to leave us with just one mole of O2. And guess what? When we add these together, we get two carbon plus O2 gives two CO. But what did I forget? I forgot to mess with this one. So I doubled the coefficients for this one, which means I need to double the value of this. So if I double negative 394, delta H is going to be, I believe, negative 788 kilojoules. And 
if I add the delta H values together, the same way I added the reactions together, negative 788 um, plus uh, 566 is going to give me, I believe, delta H equals negative 222 kilojoules. So that's Hess's law. These do get more challenging when you get three or four equations, but we'll practice those in class. And uh, this is the last part of our thermo unit. Thanks.